Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about aftermarket transmission pans for our Jeep Wrangler. We'll cover aftermarket transmission pan pros and cons, pan geometry, sump volume distribution, internal baffling, and how pitch, roll, and off-camber angles during rock crawling or steep climbs affect fluid pickup and aeration. One of the most common frustration is that the OEM pan doesn't have a drain plug, which makes fluid changes more difficult for those of us who actually like to maintain our Jeeps. In fact, that seems to be a trend. Even the diffs don't have drain plugs anymore. Not sure why, maybe it has to do with building character, because let me tell you, nothing does that more than dropping the pan and making a huge mess. And of course, there's also that never-ending search for more cooling, because if it's a Jeep, it probably needs fins. I could have used a little more cowbell. I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. <laughs> Fellas, you're gonna want that cowbell on the track. You know what, it, it's fine, let's just do... So what's next, tires? So if you wanna see fins on the tires, make sure you subscribe. But joking aside, if you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up. It lets me know to keep doing these deep, research-based videos, and it helps get this information out in front of other Jeep owners who can benefit. As spoiler alert, I'll share my take on aftermarket transmission pans right now, especially after talking with an old classmate who now consults with the car manufacturers on exactly these types of design decisions. After that conversation, I decided not to run an aftermarket pan on my Jeep. That said, I'm working on a solution that adds a drain plug and makes meaningful improvements to transmission cooling that actually works. So stay tuned for that. That's gonna be happening next time I have to change my transmission fluid. And speaking of heating or cooling, stay tuned for the next video where I break down a change that Jeep made quietly in 2021. No TSPs, no announcements, just a production change that addressed some of the cooling related issues with the Jeep Wrangler. All right, guys, let's get into it. Earlier, I mentioned that I've decided not to invest in an aftermarket transmission pad. That said, I'm not going to be that guy who claims aftermarket pans are bad or don't offer benefits over OEM. If you're running one, I would really love to hear about your experience with it, and especially if you had it installed for a while. So please leave a comment below. By now, most of us have seen videos discussing failures. For example, if you search for PPE pan fail on YouTube, you'll find issues reported even with some well-known aftermarket pans. To be fair, some of these cases may involve early adopters, and it's entirely possible manufacturers have since revised their designs and resolved those problems. A good example of this is the Gail Banks video comparing their pan to others on the market. Obviously, Banks is selling a product, and it may be an excellent one, but the reality is that we don't have an independent body evaluating these pans across brands over long-term use. It's also worth noting that the PPE pan shown in that video appears to be an older design and doesn't resemble the current pan shown on PPE's website, especially for the Wrangler. Because of that, we simply don't have enough unbiased long-term data to draw firm conclusions. What does concern me is that some of these designs appear to lack sufficient attention to engineering fundamentals, especially when it comes to pan geometry. And that was clearly shown in one of the PPE failure videos. That raises a bigger question for me. If something as critical as geometry was overlooked, what else don't we know yet? I don't want to run a pan for 20,000 miles only to discover it's been killing my transmission due to a design or manufacturing flaw. Because I don't have long-term first-hand experience with an aftermarket pan, I'm not going to make claims I can't personally back up. What I can do is show you what to look for in an aftermarket pan, explain the engineering considerations, and help you understand the compromises you may be making. Assuming an aftermarket pan makes sense for how you use your Jeep. Just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean that it won't work for someone else with a different setup or use case. I also joked earlier about cooling fins, but the reality is that fins, especially on an aluminum pan, do provide some cooling benefit. The real question is how much and at what trade-off. Even with ideal geometry, larger or fin pans introduce compromises. Those trade-offs can include reduced ground clearance, which can be a liability off-road, or interference with components. And if you plan to run an aftermarket skid plate, an oversized or fin pan may make that difficult, or in some cases not possible 
possible at all. All right, so let's talk geometry. Everything, the shape of the fan, the internal contours, the sump depth, and the location of the pump is intentional. None of it is an accident. Every design shows exists for a reason. Okay, let's look at an example or two, and then we'll tie it back all into the transmission. So it makes sense what to be aware of when it comes to choosing pans. All right, to illustrate our first example is a tanker. A tanker is a perfect example of uncontrolled fluid mass. When it accelerates, brakes, or changes direction, the fluid doesn't stop with it. It lags behind, it surges, it piles up, it shifts momentum, and that can be very dangerous. You can't stop fluid from moving. What you can do is control how it moves by, for example, introducing baffles. In this particular case, with this tanker, you can reduce sloshing by 28%. In a transmission, engineers don't fight fluid motion, they design around it. The pan isn't just a container, its shape, contours, depth changes, and sidewall angles are all engineered to guide fluid in a predictable way. As an example, here's a mixer. In this setup, the shaft is angled about 15 degrees off-center in the tank. This is almost ideal. As you can see, you get uniform suspension, smooth circulation, and consistent movement throughout the fluid. You can even see it in the way the beads move. Everything is well mixed, no dead zones. Now that's proper mixing. And yes, you can use this knowledge the next time you mix a martini or any other cocktail. Now let's keep everything else the same. Same impeller, same RPM, same fluid. The only thing we change is the geometry. We vary the angles slightly and suddenly things fall apart. You get rotation, air bubbles, vortex formation. And here's the thing, once air enters a hydraulic system, pressure becomes unstable, response slows down, heat increases, and components start wearing down. If this was a transmission, you would be wearing down all your clutches. Thankfully, this is just a martini. So how do you save your margarita or your martini if you can't change the angle? You guessed it, simple. You introduce a baffle in the right location. That one small change breaks up rotation, disrupts vortex formation, and reduces oration. The result is a better flow, better mixing, and much more stable system. And that's exactly the same idea used in transmissions. Baffles, contours, and pan geometry are there to manage fluid motion. And to stop a vortex and keep air out of the oil. So you can save the drink and maybe save your transmission too. Okay, just one more example. Next time we're off-roading and you stop by a stream, Take a look at how water flows over uneven terrain or around an obstruction, a rock, a branch, a tree. The flow accelerates, separates, and begins to rotate. That swirling motion is a vortex. It's energy concentrating as fluid changes direction and speed. And just like in a transmission, that rotation can pull air down into the flow. That's why transmission pan geometry matters so much. Yes, fluid volume matters, but flow quality matters more. Fluid doesn't care about convenience, it obeys physics. And that's what it counts when it comes to aftermarket pans. All right, let's wrap this up with what you should look for if you decide to go the aftermarket pan route. When choosing an aftermarket transmission pan, capacity shouldn't be the main goal, and neither should be a drain, especially in the wrong location, which may cause problems or fins just for the sake of fins without real engineering behind them. What actually matters is fluid control. Look for a pan that accounts for geometry and fluid behavior under real Jeep operating conditions, not just extra depth. That includes anti-vortex features like baffles and shape lower contours, and that keeps the pump supplied with calm, de-aerated oil during braking, climbs, and off-camber driving. And it should also preserve the pickup relationship. And by that, I mean, if you examine OEM designs across manufacturers who use ZF transmissions, you'll see the pickup location consistently falls within a defined range. ZF doesn't publish those numbers publicly, but take a close look at your own Jeep's pickup. Anything that appears way outside that relationship should be a warning sign. And more fluid without proper control can actually create problems. Fluid doesn't care about marketing. It obeys physics. Choose the pan that works with it. As I mentioned earlier, I'm working on a drain solution that respects the original design intent, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Longer term, I'm also looking at better ways to manage cooling. I'll be running these ideas by a friend who consults for several manufacturers, and then I will put real miles on this setup before sharing the results. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful or want to see more content like it, please consider subscribing and give a thumbs up. If you have any ideas or comments about what you want to see in the future, please comment below and I'll see you on the next one.